We love our war crimes, don't we, folks? BB just got permission from the Knesset to essentially invade Lebanon. Is that true? Top general said pushing for ground incursion to create South Lebanon buffer zone. Israel's double punch humiliation of Hezbollah is the dance on the edge of the abyss. Netanyahu briefs defense chief commander on Lebanon amid coalition talks. What's the uh, what's the permission from the Knesset? Israel war in Lebanon matter of days. Beirut suburb to look like Gaza. Knesset member. Definitely not a genocide, guys. A member of their legislature saying we're going to make a Beirut suburb look like Gaza. Definitely not, like, cartoonishly evil. Hawkish Likud MK expects Lebanon war within days. This was from September 9th, nine days ago. Oh, this is the guy who said he'll make it look like Gaza. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Here they announced it on Israeli news. Israeli cabinet has given PM Netanyahu and defense minister... Oh, when you said, like, this happened recently, you meant recently, recently. Okay, two hours ago. Israeli cabinet has given Netanyahu and defense minister Gallant the authorization to undertake military action against Hezbollah, even if it leads to all-out war. What's the U.S. going to do when Israel literally tries to destroy another nation? Well, um, the official line from the Biden administration is that we're not involved, but he's lied before about red lines. So, in reality, he's probably going to say you know, actually we're committing two full carrier groups to shell them from afar or whatever. I don't know. We're not going to put troops on the ground. That'd be insane. If if Biden puts troops on the ground in any way, shape, or form to uh, assist in the invasion of Lebanon, uh, that's like a guaranteed Trump victory, 100%. In the election, I mean. The U.S. is denying knowing about the Lebanon pager attack from Israel, but an Israeli source told Axios the Galant told Austin about conducting Operation Lebanon for the attack. I don't know the details. It's probably safe to assume that at least through our, like, spy network, our intelligence agencies probably knew about it, at least to some extent. What makes Israel think they can win against Hezbollah a third time while losing the last two times? What makes you think they can think? Also, they didn't, like, really lose both times, right? I don't think it'll work well for them this time, though. That's for damn sure. I'm just getting articles on how Netanyahu wants to fire Yoav Gallant, but it looks like that might be delayed due to this. I don't know. A war with Lebanon would be disastrous for the whole region. It'd be pretty bad. It'd be pretty bad. Yeah. The new attack with the walkie-talkies killed 20 people and injured more than 450. Yeah. Quote about opening a front in Lebanon today. Gallant said in a visit at the Israeli Air Force Base that, quote, the center of gravity is moving from Gaza to the north through a diversion of resources and forces. We are opening a new phase in the war. That's, that's great, man. That is remarkably straightforward, you know? Poor Blinken is frustrated about Israel's Mossad attack derailing peace talks. Yo, no way. Holy shit. Israel's aggression threatening peace talks? That's only the five millionth time that's happened since October 7th. That's wild. Really makes you wonder which party in this conflict is the one most insistent on obstructing peace deals, you know? Maybe the one who keeps shutting them down? Possibly? Perhaps? Blinken is such an embarrassment. Dude, we used to have Kissinger. We used to we used to make mountains move. Now Blinken is like, uh, would you, Mr. Netanyahu, sir, perhaps on this 487th request of ours, would you mind perhaps possibly... Mm, accepting a peace deal with favorable terms? No, okay. I'll go back to the media and tell them it was no one's fault. Chat being pro Kissinger. Now, Kissinger was a monster. I'm just saying that he made mountains move, and that's true. This is what a lot of the good military analysts suspected. You wouldn't do an attack like this to cripple Hezbollah comms and leadership without an offensive to follow up. Yeah, it doesn't really make much sense. You're not doing like a light little peppering with a rocket, you know. It does take a lot of time and effort to crack open pagers and walkie-talkies, fill them with a little bit of semtex, semtex or whatever, weld them back shut, and then hand them off, you know? You want to follow that up. Are we standing Kissinger now? Can we, can we let me live? Can we let me make comparisons? Is it confirmed the victims were civilians? We know for a fact that civilians were killed. Yeah. Like, Hezbollah isn't just a uh, like a, a military out there in the middle of nowhere on a military base where everyone is military, right? They're integrated pretty broadly into the portions of Lebanon that they occupy all the way up to Beirut. There are people who work with Hezbollah that are uh, basically just like politically attached to them, but not military themselves. Lots and lots of civilians got hurt. Like, of course, how could they not be? The West does terrorist attack via tech devices. Liberals, China will do this to us. There are also just Hezbollah people out and about in the city. Well, yeah, also, again, Hezbollah isn't just a military. They're widely integrated into Lebanon. Like, a lot of the equipment they have and the equipment they use gets uh, 
passed down and around. Uh, was wasn't there literally a an American hospital in Lebanon where they were told to get rid of their pagers and walkie talkies beforehand because there was a high possibility that some of the ones used by Hezbollah would have made their way into their hands because that's how it works. Like if you give a bunch of pagers and walkie talkies to Hezbollah, like it's it's they're a part of they live in a society, you know that shit's gonna get around. That's misinfo. Is that misinfo? U.S. says it wasn't tipped off. So is that not true then? I don't see anything referencing it, and I feel like it would be in the front page of results with my excellent Googling skills. Wasn't Hezbollah created because of Israeli aggression? Yes. The point is that it could happen. Well, we know for a fact that civilians were widely injured in these attacks. So we, we know for a fact that it's not exclusively injuring like Hezbollah commanders or whatever. Thankfully, chat is a fact checker for Vosh. Well, that's why I asked, didn't they? I'm asking, I'm glad that's fine. That's the, that's the process. We're here to learn together. Whether or not the Americans were tipped off as secondary, yeah, yeah, that's not, like, central to the point being made. How many of the vi victims were innocent civilians? I don't know if they check for that category at the hospital. A decent number? There are literally videos of people's pagers exploding when they're, at, like, in line at the grocery store. Forgive my ignorance, but how do pagers just, uh, just explode? They, they put bombs in them. They intercepted the, uh, the shipment of hardware, and they opened them, and they put bombs in them, and then they closed them. You can't actually overload batteries like that. Oh shit, that's insane. Yeah, it's a pretty huge flex. And the complexity of an operation like that, you know, it does suggest that Israel's interested in using this as like a precursor to an invasion. I mean, why else would you do it? Does that void the warranty? Nice meme. It's psychological warfare. Everyone is now afraid of their devices. Yeah, correct. You, you sow uh, anxiety and you... Don't I do this every time I sign into The Guardian? Didn't I just look at this on my other monitor and I was already signed in? Why does it do that? No, it's state-sponsored terrorism. It is both state-sponsored terrorism and a big flex. Wait, so it was just a hack? There wasn't explosives inside? No, the opposite. There were explosives inside. You can't hack a device to make it explode in reality. You can overheat sometimes, and there are usually fail-safes to prevent this. You can hack electronic devices to, like burn out the power or overheat the batteries, but that usually at most leads to like a sudden fire. And that's at most, like in many cases, like the contacts are gonna melt uh, or, or, or it like, or whatever, you know, like you're gonna get a burn, but chemical fire though, sure, sure. But like, we're talking about the batteries for a pager, not exactly like a car, you know, you can't make that stuff explode. Do you think the pager is exploding and all that is a war crime? Yeah. It's an undifferentiated attack that can and did harm many, many civilians, you know? It's, it is a way of doing an attack that un, is, is, is undifferentiating in its targets. I mean, you can say it's like, you know, oh, just the military had it, but clearly that didn't work out. That ain't how it works. There are videos of it online, um, Kelfiro Kamsak. They happened all over the place. Video of the sound of radios popping today. That's kind of grim. Those are a bunch of radios blowing up. Jesus. I know Walmart uses tons of radios like that in all kinds of like grocery stores. Well, thankfully, my it, it's my understanding that right now nobody's opening up electronic devices sold in the US and putting bombs in them. That's just my understanding. If it happens, it happens. It's kind of a Kingsman plot. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. Also, a lot of Hezbollah guys got hit at the funerals with the radios of Hezbollah fighters who died yesterday. Not to victim blame the Hezbollah fighters, but man, after the first one with the pagers, I really would have opened up the other equipment, right? I really would have wanted to check that one. Like, let me take a look inside my walkie-talkie. What is this tiny little beige, grayish beige chunk? I mean, I'm, I'm stupid. If I opened up a walkie-talkie, I don't think I would be able to identify like a tiny little thumbnail-sized piece of explosive, right? Saj, Mossad used those triangular security screws. Ah, they're ingenious. No one has the uh, bit for that. I feel like they probably have someone whose entire job is to inspect devices for things like bombs. I mean, Hezbollah is like a quarter million people. It's a military force that stretches across most of Lebanon, though they control some areas more dedicatedly than others, you know? You're talking about, like, checking back and determining which shipment of which products, like, what, which pagers even had the explosives, and 
like trying to, and you're doing all this like back end investigation in a country that is, in a lot of respects, very underdeveloped. You don't have the kind of like top end organizational discipline that you would get from like the American military. It's, you know, it's, I, I, I don't think it's necessarily indicative of incompetence on their part that they got, got like this. Though it is pretty remarkable that Mossad was able to pull it off. We're probably going to see an invasion of Lebanon pretty damn soon. I know I've been saying that for a while, but I feel like it's kind of the same dynamic that we saw with, with Ukraine and Russia, where it was really obvious that Russia was going to invade. And I kept saying over and over, like, yeah, it really looks like they're going to invade. I could be wrong, but it really looks like they're going to invade. And then lefties online were like, ah, look, they're not invading. You fell for State Department propaganda. And then they invaded. 